personally, I think the long intros on YouTube are absolutely ridiculous. So in this video, I'm going to do exactly two things. Number one, I'm going to shamelessly plug the modded Minecraft servers that I run and host for anybody to join. Uh, totally free. And number two, I'm going to show you exactly how to build your own modded Minecraft server on Linux. Since this video has no sponsor, I wanted to take a quick second to tell you a little bit about a project that I've been working on. Every single video on my YouTube channel that has done even remotely well has either been centered around my home lab or around Minecraft. And because of that, I started thinking, what could I do to combine these two subjects and provide something to you, the viewer, that would actually be valuable? The more I thought about it, the more I realized that it could potentially be relatively difficult for somebody to run both a dedicated server and the client side of a mod pack at the exact same time. And so I realized I already have the hardware thanks to my home lab to be able to run a whole bunch of these servers at the same time. So why not set them up and just let you guys use them? So that's exactly what I did. I currently have one vanilla server and five different mod packs set up that are completely free to use. I have plans to set up over 20 more that will be coming out soon and again will be entirely free to use. The goal of this project is simply to allow friends to be able to play with each other on a server without one of them having to take the incredible performance hit of actually having to run that server for themselves. Again, this is totally free, so please feel free to share the server information with whoever you think might actually use it. Okay, back to the video. So starting off, we're going to assume a couple things. Number one, we're going to assume that you already have a Linux box of some sort set up that you can install this server on. If not, there's a lot of other YouTube videos on how to set up a Linux VM. And number two, we're going to assume that you have it up to date. Um, well, I'm not going to show you how to update Linux. It's also a pretty simple process. So the first thing that we're going to need to do to actually install this server is to uh, download the server files. Easiest way to do this is just go to a web browser and search for Feed the Beast. So for the purposes of this video, we're going to try to install and set up a Feed the Beast Revelation server. So once you're on Feed the Beast website, you're going to click on the Mod Pack tab, and then we're going to search for Feed the Beast Revelations. Okay. So once you find the Mod Pack that you're looking for on here, there's going to be a tab right here that's called Server Files. Click that tab, and we'll have the most updated at the very top. The easiest thing to do is click on the Linux button since we're installing it on Ubuntu, and it will download the files for you. You can, if you want to, make some sort of folder structure for this. I usually put it in my home. I called it Feed the Beast Rev for this because it's Feed the Beast Revelations. We're going to paste the server install files in here, and then we're going to open it up in Terminal. Now, in order to run the server install, we're first going to need to edit the permissions to allow us to run it. So in order to do that, we run a chmod plus x, and then whatever the server script name is. So this one is server install underscore 35 underscore 2129. Hit enter on that, it'll allow you to run it, and then you can do a dot slash server install underscore 35 underscore 2129. It'll ask you where you'd like to install it because we just created this directory specifically for this mod pack. We're gonna go ahead and install it just in the root directory. Um, it'll tell you that the path already exists. You can put a Y in there. Oh, <laughs> you're going to want to confirm that you do want to install it there and then it'll go download everything for you. Okay, so there you have it. The very first installation is done. The next thing we need to do is run the start.sh script. So in order to do that, it's another dot backsplash. <laughs> backsplash. It's another dot backslash start.sh. Man, if I could spell. It'll ask you if you want to agree to the Minecraft end user license agreement. You just click yes on that. Now, this being the first time I'm installing this server, I will say it does look like there are a lot of errors during the startup, so I wouldn't exactly be too worried about it because it, it definitely looks like that they're supposed to be in there, which is kind of odd, but it, it's not entirely uncommon when you have this many mods that are trying to all work together at once. Oh, sit back and twiddle your thumbs. Not a, not a whole lot to do while it downloads all this. Okay, there you have it. Uh, it should be installed, set up, and running now. Uh, there's a couple other things I want to mention. First of all, if you, um, at this point, if you were to run this mod pack on your computer, you could join it from your local home network. In order to join it from a different network, you need to do two things. Number one, you need to set up port forwarding for your specific router. I wish I could give you just like a, hey, this is how to do it kind of thing but you really can't. Um, you kind of have to look it up for each specific router because it is so different for um, every different model. Um, 
The second thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to find out your public IP address and give that to anybody who you want to be able to join your server. Uh, easiest way to do that, just Google what is my public IP address, copy that and send it to them, DM them, Discord them, whatever you want to do to get it to them. But that's the IP that they're going to be using to join your Minecraft server. All right, so it is finally loaded now. There's a couple things I want to do. I do want to change a couple things in the server properties, and then we're going to restart it. First thing we're going to change, we're going to change max players to 10. We're going to change the server port to 25566. We're going to save it. And then we're going to restart the server and then we're done. We're good to go. So from here, we're going to stop. It'll close out. And then we can start it back up again. Uh, all right, Feed the Beats Revelations gave me trouble on both Windows and Linux. It's not the easiest one in the world to do, but as you can see, I did set it up. I was able to get it running and I can join it from my local network. And as soon as I set up port forwarding for it, I'll be able to join from anywhere. If you're interested, like we talked about earlier, this specific server that I just set up will actually be available for you to join if you figure out that your computer can't support both running a server and the client side of Feed the Beast Revelation at the same time. Other than that, you made it to the end of the video. You might as well like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.